GCP service accounts are identities within GCP. However, this is not your typical identity. GCP service accounts are special because they're typically tied to an application, compute workload, or cloud storage rather than a person. The resources that this default service account is tied to also have what you call a resource policy that defines the permission this resource has. Typically, a service account will be created so that it can perform various tasks for the resources it's created for. All of these things exist within the GCP project, which exists within the GCP folder, which further exists within a GCP organization, which is sort of an equivalent to what you'd call an AWS organization or Azure subscription. Now, when it comes to IAM permissions, GCP IAM roles have a special ability called inheritance, meaning that whatever permissions you have in a GCP organization will be the same level of permissions you have in a folder within that organization and in a project within that folder. So this means that there are no role boundaries, unfortunately. But generally, DAOs will interact with resources at the project level. Now, these default service accounts that are intended for simple resources have a huge problem with them. The problem is that the default service account is assigned the editor role at its creation, which makes it highly privileged and excessively permissive. This role has over 6,000 permissions. What this means is that if an attacker is able to get hold of credentials for this service account, they have the ability to perform all the permissions that this service account can perform. This essentially means that if a service account is compromised at the organizational level, all folders and projects within those folders in that organization are completely pwned. And that is exactly what happened in the attack case we'll be going over in a second. But before we do that, we must acknowledge the fact that service account have essentially attained the ability of immortality. Okay, not quite literally. But when you create credentials or keys for your default service accounts, they live until December 31st, 9,999 by default. Basically, the next 8,000 years. By then, we'll probably be living on Mars. Now, in this case, the attacker was able to steal the credentials for a Google Cloud App Engine service account. The Google Cloud App Engine is basically a cloud computing platform as a service, also known as PaaS for short, which is used for developing and hosting web applications in Google's managed data centers. Basically, the applications are sandboxed and run across multiple servers. In this case, the stolen service account was the default service account, which had a highly privileged role of project editor. Remember that the project editor has over 6,000 permissions. And this allowed the threat actor to launch an attack that ended with the creation of multiple high core CPU virtual machines for crypto mining purposes. As you can see here, this attack flow breaks down exactly what I explained in the video earlier on. When the user creates an app engine instance, the cloud provider creates a default service account and attaches it to the created app engine. This app engine default service account has the editor role in the project. The editor role is highly privileged, which is a key factor the attacker took advantage of. This role allowed execution of high privilege API calls such as compute workload launch, firewall root modification, and a service account key creation. And I'm pretty certain that the creation of a new service account key in that Google Cloud environment must have been used as a means of persistence. So the attack essentially started with the attacker trying to attempt to escalate privileges. Basically, they did this by trying to add the compute admin role to the current permissions they have. And with this compute admin role, they will be able to achieve their aim of manipulating compute instances for crypto mining. A really great detection opportunity here is detecting when a service account is attempting to add new roles to its already present roles. This might be a really good sign of privilege escalation from a compromised service account. Next, the attacker modified firewall rules on the project level. Basically, they created a subnet named default, and this is definitely a means of defense evasion. Basically, if you create a resource named default, it's easy for anyone to just overlook it because it looks like it might be the default resource already created by Google Cloud for whatever reason. So basically, they're allowing egress for TCP and UDP, and they named it default allow out. Really, really easy to overlook. And this action of updating the firewall rule essentially enables the attacker's goal of mining cryptocurrency. Basically, they removed all limitations at the networking level by adding TCP and UDP egress for that firewall rule. They also note the importance of the priority fields. Now, when you have ACLs or firewall rules, the very first one takes the most precedence. Basically, by the attacker setting the priority of this firewall rule to zero, 
it makes this rule the highest priority, meaning that it will take effect first before any other existing firewall rules. So even if there are other allow or deny rules after this priority zero rule, it's going to be the first one that works before any other rule is propagated against any network traffic coming in or out of that firewall. A potential detection opportunity here is detecting when a service account is creating resources that have no relation to the resource it was actually created for. Or if a service account is modifying already existing resources for whatever reason, this is definitely something worth taking a look at. And in this attack, over 16,000 VMs were created. That's a whole lot of VMs and I'm very sure that whatever cloud environment this was must have gotten a really fat bill from Google Cloud at the end of that month. And finally, this is the confirmation of my initial assumption that that service account key that was created was definitely used as some sort of backdoor or persistence. So the attacker assumed that the service account key that was used for the attack would be detected and revoked as part of some sort of incident response. And therefore, they created multiple service account keys for later usage by executing the Google IAM admin create service account key API call. So as we've seen, service accounts are very, very interesting Google Cloud identities. Service accounts in the Google Cloud platform can be overly permissive and have very high privileges that could eventually lead to complete compromise of your project, your folder, or even your entire organization. It even gets worse if you have service accounts that have some sort of relations within other organizations. This could lead to compromises of multiple cloud environments. So I hope this video has been insightful in understanding how service accounts work in GCP, how they can be compromised, and some detection opportunities that you might want to take a look at when dealing with GCP service accounts. That's it for this video. If you like the video, please be sure to subscribe and hit the like button for more videos like this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.